Since the beginning of time, there was this, this lady walking amongst the lands. She looked like a, like a baby. Princess, a baby princess, princess baby. And uh, her name was Louise. What's my wife? <laughs> bitch what's up everyone welcome to sunday with ola sunday number 15 i think <laughs> i know you guys have been waiting for this sunday and i'm here to deliver you just have to get rid of all my gas so what's up guys damn it this has been the first full week for me getting back to my job 100 it's been absolutely awesome stressful i mashed out a bunch of content i had a f interview with John the Magician Petrucci himself my absolute hero and legend I had this interview yesterday I was nervous as fuck. that interview will probably be up next week this coming week I hope you guys look forward to it because I thought it was a pretty sick ass interview so I'm back from vacation I'm back fully on time I'm writing music like no other that first piece of music that you heard there the riff challenge you can download those drums and make your own riff uh... Riffs. I mean, do whatever you want, man. Upload it to YouTube and maybe I'll get you featured in the next Son of Withola. That is a slight good deal right there. Done news. Not sure if you noticed this, but in that intro song, uh, you know, the, the drums sound a little bit different. Did you hear that? It's because I'm using a new drum pack called Modern Fusion from Get Good Drums. Get Good. It's Nolly, Adam Getgood, Misha Mansour, uh, Matt Halpern. They have their own company with drum samples, whatever. They sent this pack to me. I tried it out and uh, I wrote that thing in the beginning there. So really inspiring. I think the drum sounds absolutely kick-ass. It was released this past week and it looks something like this. It's super simple, man. It's just like two levers. That's it. You have master and reverb and that's it. It's a drum pack that is made to just sound kick-ass and you don't have to do anything about it basically you just put it on your track and it will be good and mixed ready for you to just you know put onto any song and that's what i felt when i did this first song i mean it fits really well it fits really well i just wanted to make this little shout out because uh, they were nice to send this to me you know i'm really liking the sound of these drums so get good drums link down there somewhere okay Shit, I forgot, but Solar Guitars released a new guitar. I don't have it here, but it's basically an A1.6 Floyd Rose Black. And you're like, huh? Wait, you had that guitar already? No. It's Gloss Black. <gasps> Damn right. It's the first A1.6 Black Gloss. Okay, because I know a lot of people out there that play Floyd and like, eh, they just want Gloss. Well, there you go. Assholes. No, you're not, sorry, you're not f***ing assholes. It's actually a very, very cool guitar. It's just that I didn't have it here to uh, show it to you guys. But it's a Floyd. It's pretty sick, actually. No, but a piece of news that I wanted to share with you guys, and uh, this is out of the ordinary, I must say, because now usually this is the segment where I talk about guitars and shit, but, you know, being such a fan of Dream Theater in general, I think this is excellent news, okay? Before you leave, because I'm talking about bass, chill, okay? It's okay. Bass is needed in this society, okay? 
we're nothing without the bass players, just as, you know, the bass players are nothing without the drums, or the guitarists, or the bassists. The same. Young Myung of Dream Theater has a signature bass with Music Man, and it's called the Bongo Bass. Now, not the most exciting name I've heard for a bass guitar, but, you know, it makes sense. It's a, it's a bass. <laughs> Bongo. But yeah, I thought we would check out this video together because I think there's a couple of different uh, really cool things about this that I thought was uh, actually pretty cool. Now, it's a six string bass because obviously you need six strings to play Dream Fitter, but it's on a five string nut and with a five string width to the neck. So all the strings are just a lot closer to each other and supposedly it's gonna be a lot easier to play. So that's very, very interesting. The fretboard is half and half, just like at Starbucks, you know, you get half and half milk and coffee. Divided wood fretboard. That's a, that's a badass demo, by the way. Oh, so, so the neck is roasted maple and rosewood, half and half. So that's pretty cool. That's probably the first time I've seen someone, you know, split up a fretboard in this manner, at least. So uh, I think that's pretty cool. I'm not too excited about the body shape or the f headstock shape for that matter. Hey, look at the headstock, man. What? Yeah. Not my thing, but uh, I mean, I like the features of it, and uh, obviously it's John Myung, and you know, he's, he's cool. I was actually thinking about this, maybe because of the tighter, you know, string spacing on this guitar, maybe it will be uh, a good bass for guitar players to use. You know, maybe John is just trying to, to kind of meet halfway with guitar players and be like, hey man, we can still be friends, even though, you know, you hate us and we hate you. Let's just see if we can meddle here somehow. That's what he's doing. Since I tried my, you know, skateboarding skills back in my FEQ, you know, I've been starting to ride my skateboard to and from the office. And now I take the skateboard everywhere. And uh, it's dangerous. I'm not wearing a helmet. I'm not really being a good, responsible human being, but uh, at least my daughter is wearing a helmet. Okay, are you ready? My balance game is not on point, but I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. If you ever saw Goofy riding a skateboard, that's how I feel right now. I don't dare do any tricks now. I need a helmet and some real protection for that, but it's fun, it's fun. I feel old, but it's okay. Alright, so for this week's Sunday challenge, as usual, you guys are absolutely batshit insane. God damn, you guys are awesome. It just makes me happy to see that there are more and more contributions for every week, so thank you so much for that, you guys are awesome. For today's Sunday with Ola Riff Sunday Week Riff Challenge, I, <laughs> I picked uh, this guy, Peter Fredland. Let's watch it together. Very feared style, I must say. That this uh, sounds like a feared chorus. Just saying. I like this. Now it sounds like Rabea. Unfortunately, Peter is Danish. God bless his soul. <laughs> Of course, I'm just kidding. You guys are okay in my book, okay? Chill. I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> this is menacing. I like this. What is he playing there? He's playing on a strat, man. Two humbuckers. 
I like that. Oh, that's a good face. So there you go, that's Peter Fredland for you. If you want to be just as cool as Peter, I doubt you will be, but if you want to try and be as cool as Peter, you can take the drums from this week's challenge, make your own riffs, upload to YouTube, and maybe you have a shot at being featured in the next Sunday with Ola. Cool, huh? So the riff of the day, let's just do that cool f riff I did in the beginning there. I think it's kind of cool, it's this. Simple as f right? Well, you need a guitar tuned to E-flat. This guitar is an E-flat. Don't ask me why I tuned this guitar to E-flat, but it's an E-flat. The important thing with this riff is that you make the slides happen, okay? Look at this. Easy peasy, my little friends. Ola Tasting Shit. What's up, everyone? And welcome to Ola Tasting Shit, together with Louise. Now, we... Hi. So I received a whole bag of goodies from uh, Mario. Thank you so much, by the way. I've tested some of this stuff for the past weeks. And now, Louise and I just figured, like, let's just put it all on the table and just, you know, go, go bonkers, basically. Like, let's just eat everything and see what happens. Are you excited? Yeah. Great. This is uh, nothing I've never seen before. Exactly, and that's nothing the point. So it's Mexican, right? Yeah. And we have this. I've already tried this. It's uh, Popa Rindo. It's really, really good and awesome. I want you to try it out. <laughs> <laughs> Do I believe that? Do I ever lie? What is it? Is it a chocolate or? You can say it's not chocolate. Oh, it's... Uh, it's yeah. almost, it looks like toffee, right? Don't, yeah. don't smell it, just eat it. Taste oh raisins. That's what I said. <laughs> Concentrated raisins. Mm, yeah, but it's very um, shitty. Sour? <laughs> no, it's very sour. Sour, oh. yeah. I think it's because Is someone it someone told me Mexican likes to have spice in their this candy. It's really spicy. And uh, poporindo, it's the pulp of tamarind. Oh yeah. Was it good? Mm? Yeah, I don't think I would eat like a full box of them. As candy? <laughs> no. Like on the Friday uh, evening, you're like, oh, let's pop this Netflix uh, movie on and have some pulparindo. I think this is too spicy for me. I don't eat a lot of spicy food, so yeah. All right, pulparindo. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't bad though. Yes, pulparindo. We gave it another shot. It was interesting. It was, it was. interesting. That's a very you political way of saying say it. Say this for my sister. I think she would like it. Okay, let's do this. This is oblias, which I guess are, you know, oblate. Oh, mm -hmm. exactly. I guess you put them under your tongue and then you sing a, a song or something. Mm -hmm. We're not frequent in the church activities. Let's just say that. It says con leche, so that means it's milk. I hope it's okay, milk caramel. chocolate. Okay. It's not too bad. It has this, you know, the paper thing on here. It's it tastes like paper, right? But what is this inside? It has the same color as the pulparindo. I don't think it was, it was bad. Nice. It was nice. It was, it was nice, and then she froze it in the garbage can. Same. That was okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe not something I would eat, eat as candy. Is that microphone now in my face? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, chocolate obliados. Maybe you should like show it more. Hmm? I have this. Good. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Great. Uh, some kind of seed or? This is like spider eggs on chocolate. It's pretty nice. It's like paper chocolate. It's like eating a piece of paper that tastes like chocolate. Yeah. Yes, thank you. But this, boo boo loo boo. Look at that color it's, there. Uh, it's red, so I guess it's some kind of fruit. Here we go. Fruits. I think there's two pieces in one. Like These are a little, <laughs> let's say that they're a little squishy. Let's do this. That's a big no-no. It's not that it's uh, not tasty, it's just not my thing. I don't like uh, squishy uh, candy. It's almost like um, marmalade. Yeah. Not a fan. Okay, what do you have? Glorious Relenius. Relenius. I'm, I'm not gonna eat this. No. No, that doesn't... No. It's... it's. We're gonna be sick. Yeah, I think we're gonna no. be sick by this. It's, <laughs> it's, it looks like a piece of shit wrapped in paper. And smells like, like it. And, <laughs> It smells a little funky as well. So now, thank you, thank you though. We're not gonna eat that. Chocorolas. What? 
No. All of them look like they've been sat on. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't eat that. Oh, oh. No. That's also That's marzipan. also marzipan. Yeah. What the hell? We, we we're not That's fans right. of marzipan. None yeah. of us are. But uh I'm, I'm gonna lick it. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was the best? If I needed to eat something, I think it would be the this chocolate one. paper was the best. Or the, this one was all right. Too. Yes. So there you go. I must say now that we've tried uh, a lot of Mexican candy, I hate to say it, but I don't think I'm a fan. I think if we're going to Mexico, we'll have to bring our own. Who's gonna clean up this mess? I guess that's me. So <laughs> let's come. Thank you. All the tasting shit. You know, as I'm starting to get back, you know, into full time working after vacation and all, you know. I went into this room right here and you know this is a this is a lovely room it's where i have all my guitars you know all my amplifiers and all my pedals well maybe not everything but at least you know there's a lot here but it's also a lot of bullshit and you know you know oh but this is cute though my daughter drew that it says mom i guess this is i don't know who this is but she has massive boobs. And even though, you know, I've recorded a fair bit in this room right here, I feel like I need to do something for this room. So initially, you know, I plan to hang all of my guitars on these walls right here outside. So, you know, you can see them at all times, but maybe, you know, I should fix this room, make it all black or something like that and just put all of my guitars on the wall. Uh, right next to my amplifiers and just pimp this room basically. Let me look at this. Oh, you know what? Okay, F I'm gonna put that on hold for a couple seconds because I just found this box uh, of an angle amplifier that I haven't unboxed. Let's go unbox it. All right, sorry for derailing there. I'm not gonna unbox that angle fireball right now. Uh, I'm gonna make a video of it this weekend, I promise. But uh, yeah, what I wanted to ask you guys is to you know share me pictures of a really really good looking display room for guitars or something like that i just want this room to become such a chill f cool room where i can film and you know it, it'll, it's just gonna look impressive as f really and i'm gonna try and record the process of me fixing up this room right here and make a just smarter solution for everything i mean look at this the cases are just all over the place and you know even though this was a good idea uh, I need more shelves like this because obviously, you know, I can't fit all my amps. Look up here, by the way. Cool thing about being, you know, president of solar guitars is that I get this. You know, I get different uh, wood samples. Usually I get these at the factory, but now when, uh, you know, because of the pandemic and all that, we send uh, wood samples to me. So this is uh, what we use for the uh, AB 1.6. Uh, the, the, the one with the purple <laughs> and the fixed bridge. And yeah, some, some cool colors here. Uh, green? Huh? How cool is that? Some blue. Maybe that will be interesting to actually put on the wall, you know? Put it like this. A color palette like this or something. Wouldn't that be cool? I think so. Shoot me your ideas, guys. Maybe you can be a part of this. And uh, we'll make something cool happening in this room. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to fixing this shit up. All right, so that, my friends, was the Sunday with Ola number 15. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe if you liked it. And if you're missing the FAQ section, it's because I don't have an FAQ section anymore in this. I will have another FAQ coming very, very soon. So if you have any questions, go to that FAQ, this, the last one, and then uh, upload your questions there. Yes. In the meantime, guys, I hope you'll have a good Sunday and I'll see you very, very soon. Okay, thank you. <laughs>